Thank you, thank you, thank you. All praises to the Most High and His Son Jesus the Christ, our Savior, our Messiah. Uh, we came all the way from the United States and other various countries over here to Liberia to bring you the new, to, to bring you the good understanding, the true understanding of the gospel. Um, just now, you guys brought out a beautiful scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4 which many of us are familiar with, how if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, what you're gonna find out is that the black people throughout the diaspora, scattered throughout Africa and the United the various states, we have been following another Jesus. Okay? So um, our organization in Israel United in Christ is spearheaded by Bishop Nathaniel who is our leader and who is our teacher, all right? And the Most High found it fit and favor to bestow upon him the wisdom and understanding of this Bible and we'll come all the way here to share it with you, all right? So let's give this man a round of applause, please. All praise to the Most High, all praise. What we're gonna do today, we're gonna go into the Bible and actually read scriptures. I know many churches throughout uh, Liberia, Ghana, Nigeria, America, the United Kingdom, we cherry pick scriptures, but we never really read the Bible. For example, give me Amos chapter 5. Wherever we go, we were in the Netherlands some time ago, and many of the songs that they done did were reminiscent of what I heard today. Let me show you what God said about the Israelites. I'm going to um, challenge your understanding of the Bible. By the end, we're going to open up for questions. Okay? Amos chapter 5, let's start at verse 21. This is the book of Amos chapter 5, verse 21. Let me ask a question. How many of you in here have Bibles? Raise your hand. Wow. Who has a Bible with them? Six people have Bibles. And look at all these people here. Wow. First, give me 1 Samuel 2 and 3. I have to start there first. I only got 30 minutes, but I need to touch certain things. When we come to worship the Lord, this is what you all must understand. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Talk no more exceeding proudly. Listen good. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. That's when you think you know everything. Go ahead. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. The Lord is a God of knowledge. This is why I ask, how many of you have Bibles? When you read the Bible, we got together. We all had the parchments. We read the scriptures. That way you can determine truth from lie. Read it again. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The Lord is a God of knowledge. God of knowledge. Let me ask you a question regarding the God of knowledge. The God of knowledge. When we go to Matthew 24, verse 5, Christ warned us about something. He warned our people. I'm going to challenge the people's thinking to determine where are the men and women of Liberia found in the Bible. The Bible names all races in the Bible, but where are the people of Liberia named? Some of you have Bibles. You've been going to church all your lives. You should be able to open the scripture and say, here's the people of Liberia. No one knows. Okay. Let's start with Christ. Matthew 24, verse 5. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Let me ask a question. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Who does the world say this is? Who does the world say this is? Jesus. Jesus. That's who the world says this is. But now, since God is a God of knowledge, how many of you can open the Bible and prove to us this is Jesus? That Jesus looks like that. Sick of 
you have your Bible, someone please open your Bible and prove that this is Jesus. Matthew 24 and 5 again. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive men. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters in the library, we've been deceived. Growing up from a youth, I would have given my life and said that was Jesus. But having read the Bible 20 times, that's not found in the Bible. There is no scripture that describes Jesus having straight thin hair, pink red skin, blue eyes, not one. When do we really become deceived? During the time of colonialism and slavery. Let me say it again. When did we really become deceived? During the time of colonialism and slavery. Everything that we know about God and Jesus was taught to us by the colonizer. Taught to us by the slave master. I want you all to listen good. Many of our ministers teach this, but no one ever says minister. Show me this in the Bible. Now let's go into the Bible and read the description of Jesus. Now two things are going to happen. Two things. The first thought, if you realize that the white image of Jesus is not in the Bible, the second thing is, you're going to say, nobody ever seen Jesus. That's the next thought. Well, if that's true, how did they nail him to the cross? How did they whip him if nobody saw him? Here's the third thing that comes up in your mind. It doesn't matter what he looks like. Well, if that's true, then why are we giving these false images during the time of colonization and slavery? If it doesn't matter. The truth always matters. Now, if I were to ask you, hold this up, who's this guy? You'd say, I don't know. Who is that black man I don't know? I don't know who this is. Now we're going to read the Bible. Those six of you in Bible, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 1. Let's start there. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So the word revelation means the revealing. The revealing of Jesus Christ. Revelation reveals Christ. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. And I turn to see the voice that spake with me. You know why I want to go there? Because some ministers say, no, no, no. John was sleeping. No, it said, I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. So was he asleep? No, he was wide awake. He turned to see the voice that spoke with him. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool. Now he begins to describe Jesus. His head and his hands. Meaning the hair on his head and the hair on his face was white like wool. How many of you know what wool hair is? He has wool hair. She has wool hair. Mm, wool hair. Wool hair is black people hair. You understand? Thick, kinky hair. So wait a minute, this image is wrong. He has yellow hair here, brown hair here, and it's thin and straight here also. So that's strike one for this image. But when I go over here, his head and his hands were white, like wool. Read on. As white as snow. His hair was fully white. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now that might seem hard to understand, what does that mean? What was Jesus Christ's first miracle? He turned water into wine. Do you think he drunk some? You don't think Jesus was drinking wine? Hmm. Read Genesis 49 verse 4. Moses tells you about Jesus. Watch this. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. His shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be red with wine. When you read Matthew 11 18, they call Christ a wine dinner. This is why you try to have your Bibles so you can read for yourselves. Give me that Matthew 11. You know what I want? Matthew 11, verse 19. Wait. Listen, 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 listen. 
listen. Listen up. Matthew 11, verse 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber. They call Christ a wine bibber. A wine bibber is someone that drinks wine. But he was not drunk. He drunk in moderation. So now when we go back to Revelation chapter 1, his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why? Because he drank wine. Feet? And his feet. Hey! And his feet. Like I see her feet. I see your feet. I see your feet. I see her feet. I can see your feet. I see your feet. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. Stop. His feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brass. Brass. Uh, brass is not gold. What color is brass? Brass. Brass is brown. Like a penny. Copper penny. It's similar to brass. Read it again. And his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is similar to this. Very similar. His feet like unto fine brass. What happens if I burn this in the furnace? What does it look like? It's going to get blacker. Blacker. Wait a minute! So, this is 100% false. False. But when I come over here, okay, baby. Hmm. That's very close. Very close. God is a God of knowledge. You know why some people are giving me a, a funny look? Some people give a funny look about a black Jesus because you've never heard that before. Some of you may even dislike the way you look. So when you hear about a black Jesus, it's odd. It's unheard of. Because for all your life, you thought Jesus was black. Like, you thought he was black, just like we did. All our lives. But now that we read the Bible, he looks like you. 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 Now it gives you self-esteem. Wait a minute. You know what? If we taught our children that, we would gain such a self-esteem amongst ourselves, amongst our people, and stop waiting for the colonizer to come teach us the word of God. Now watch this. Let me ask you the next question. The Jews in the Bible. Oh, wait a minute. You know what I want? Give me the minute just 13 30. About this. Some of our sisters, you ever see some black women? They like to dye their hair yellow. You ever see some of that? Let me ask a question. Why do you think some black women and some black men dye their hair yellow? What is that? Oh, they want to look white. Let's see what the Bible says about yellow thin hair. Let's talk about it. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Listen up, listen up. Listen up. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. The unclean if you have yellow thin hair. Read. It is a dry skull. Even a leprosy upon the head or beard. If you have yellow hair, God says that's leprosy. We never know that. I thought God had yellow hair. I thought our sisters are supposed to have straight hair. I saw this a few minutes ago. Okay, she perms her hair. She perms her hair. She perms her hair. Oh, the Bible says, now let me tell you about this image. This image has given our sisters, this is a black woman, a self-hatred about our hair. We don't like it. We want this. So many of us sisters, we love y'all, don't misunderstand. I was even in America, they straighten their hair. Why? Like the brother said over there, they have an affinity for white hair. Then some of our sisters dye their hair like this, yellow. Now we read the Bible, the Bible says yellow hair is leprosy. Wow. Wow, that's a shock. I never knew that. Now, the angels. I'm going to just go with basic scriptures because I got a short time. The angels in the Bible. You, see, you ever see angels around? I see you on that angel. What do they look like? What do the angels look like? They look white. Watch this. 
Nicole. Blacker than Nicole, read. They are not known in the streets. The Israelites would not be known in the streets. That's why you don't even know who you are. You don't know who you are in the Bible. Isaiah 1 and 3. If I ask you, just like in America, we get all these crazy answers, unbiblical answers. Watch this. Come on. Isaiah chapter 1. There's a book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh -huh. And it says, The ox knoweth his owner. An ox is a dumb animal, but it knows his owner. Read. And the ass is master's critic. An ass is another dumb animal, but it can find its way to his master's critic. Good. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. The prophecy is the Israelites would not know who they are in the last days. The Israelites would not know who they are in the last days. Uh, Jeremiah 17 and verse 4. Write down what I'm giving you. Write it down. Write it down. And fact check what I say. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. So the question is, what would happen to the Israelites in the last days? Watch this. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. You would discontinue from the heritage God gave you. What is your heritage? Your heritage is you're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Your heritage is that Moses gave you laws, statutes, and commandments. And we have broke every commandment as we do this very day. We are. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemy. God said he will cause you Israelites to serve your enemies. Read. In the land which thou knowest not. In the land which thou knowest not. How did our people get to Liberia? Now you gotta think, how did we get to Liberia? Let's think back. The American Colonies Society, 1822. They sent shiploads of slaves from America and Canada back to Africa and established Monrovia, Liberia. Monrovia. Where does that name Monrovia come from? Monrovia. Watch the prophecy. Just listen. This is good. What I'm giving to you, you're never going to hear again. Come on. Psalms 49, Psalms verse 11. 49, verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. There's a particular people who think that they're going to continue forever. Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. Read. They call their lands after their own name. They call their lands after their own name. Read. There's a particular That's why I have to wear Monroe here. James Monroe, a white man. And he named it Liberia. Now you say, oh, I'm Liberian. Where did you get that name? The white man gave it to it. Just like African American, white man gave us that name. But what does God call us? You're going to find out you're all the Israelites. And I'm going to prove that. Everything I said we can prove in the Bible. Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons.
IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.